Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and I'm here today to talk to you about user permissions. Normally, when you think about handling user permissions in Xano, the most typical use case is that you will assign roles to each of your users, and those user permissions will be determined by the role that they have assigned to them. What I want to show you today is how we can enable more granular user permissions. A real world use case of this would be parental controls. Maybe you have an app that does X amount of functions and you want the managers of those users, in that case, the parents of the children, to be able to determine individually what operations they can and cannot perform. We're gonna jump into Xano. I'm gonna show you what the database structure looks like. We'll walk through a few functions and APIs, and then I will show you how it all works in action. So in my Xano workspace, I have a few different tables. We have two data tables, which we're just using as examples, so you don't need to have those. We have a permission requests table, which keeps track of when users want to request permissions to certain functions. We have a permissions table, which keeps track of all of our different APIs and what users can access them. And then we have a user table, which is just a very standard user table. However, it does contain a couple of additional flags, such as a list field of table references, that keeps track of what users that specific user is able to manage. And then we also have an is admin field to determine if that user is an administrator. So the first thing we need to do is we need to populate this permissions table. This permissions table is going to contain every single API that we have in our application. And it's also going to contain, of course, what users can access those APIs. So we have a pre-built API, which will be available in the snippet down in the description below. So you can install this right to your workspace and use it right away. Is this populate permissions API? This API uses the metadata API to get a list of all of your API endpoints and populate them inside of that permissions table. If you're not familiar with the metadata API, that's okay. We'll have a link down in the description for a video to get you started. But basically, it is a collection of API endpoints that Xano provides to you so you can programmatically manage the content inside of your workspaces. So to start, we get a few values from our request headers, and we need these to populate the request that we're going to make to the metadata API. Once we have the values that we need, we then perform an API request to the metadata API using the instance URL and workspace ID, which we found using these create variable steps above. This first call to the metadata API returns a list of API groups. Once we have a list of the different API groups that exist in our workspace, we then loop against that list. And for each of those groups, we make another call to the metadata API to request the APIs that are inside of that group. Once we have a list of those APIs, we can then loop against those. And for each of those, add a record to the permissions table. So let's go ahead and run this. And then we'll go and check our permissions table. And you can see it is now populated with all of the API endpoints that I have in this workspace with the appropriate IDs and verbs as well. So now that we have the permissions table populated, we can actually start checking user permissions for when we call our APIs. So how does this work? Let's take a look at this get data one endpoint. So there's a couple of things that need to happen for this to function properly. We need authentication to be enabled on the endpoint. To do that, we just go into the settings for the API and we make sure that our authentication is enabled. And then inside of the function stack, the very first step is to run this check permission function. This check permission function takes the ID of the API and the ID of the user who has supplied their auth token and it checks to make sure that this user has permission to actually make a call to this API. So it does that by taking that API ID and user ID, it gets the user record from the user table, and then we query the permissions table. Now this query, it might look a little bit complex, but I promise it's super easy. The first thing we do is we just look up the record in the permissions table that matches the API ID. Once we have that, we check the list of users who are allowed to call that API, and we make sure that that user exists in that list. But there are a couple of caveats to that. So even if the user is not in that list, maybe this API is allowed to be used by all users. So we also check that field. 
And then we also check to see if this API is allowed to be called by all administrators. And if it is, and the user is an administrator, then we will go ahead and give them permission to run. So there's a couple of different ways that a user can actually have permission to run this endpoint. It's whether or not they have explicit permission to do so, whether or not the endpoint is allowed by all users or just allowed by admins only. If this query returns a record, that means that user has permission to call the API. And so we then use a precondition to check to see if this returns any data. If it does return data, then we just proceed with execution as normal. If it does not return any data, that means that that user is not authorized and we halt execution and we return an error that just says unauthorized. Let's take a look at that in action. I'm going to go back to my get data API and we will run this. We'll go ahead and pick user ID number one. And when we run this, you can see we get an error that says unauthorized. This is expected because we have no actual permissions populated on that permissions table. So let's go over to the database. We'll go to permissions. We're going to find that get data API and let's go ahead and add user number one. Now we'll go back to that API endpoint again, and we'll run it one more time. And you can see we are now returned the results from that table because we have now been given permission to call that API. We were allowed this permission because the user with an ID of one is specifically listed in that table that they are allowed to call this API. However, we can go back to that permissions table and we can actually just delete this here. And let's go ahead and say that this API can be called by all users. And let's go back and we will run it again. And you will see that we are still returned a result. Let's pick user number two, run it again. And we are still given that same result as expected because this API is allowed to be used by all users. Now there is a pretty obvious question that needs to be asked once we get to this point. That is how do users request permissions? it doesn't really make sense to go into the permissions table and manually fill in permissions for each of the APIs that you have in your application. I don't have a ton here, but even with this small amount, I have 27 APIs here. Even that, if I had more than a couple of users, that's just gonna take way too long. And so we have another API, which is also included in the snippet called permission request. This works by taking the ID of the API in as an input, we then of course, first check permission to make sure that this user is allowed to request permissions. If they are, then we just add a record to this permission requests endpoint. For this to work, the user who is requesting permission needs to have at least one manager assigned to them. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go over to user. We're going to say that user number one manages user number two. So now we'll go over to that uh, permission request API and we're gonna run this. We will authenticate as user number two and our API ID is 17900. That is the ID of that get data one API that we looked at earlier. And you can find this uh, when you're viewing the API in the upper left-hand corner or on your list of APIs right under the verb. So now let's run this. And you can see this doesn't really return a response. You can have it return a response if you'd like. For the purposes of this demo, it's not really necessary, but we can go over to the permission requests table and we can see that the API requested was data underscore one and it was requested by user number two. So now we just need an API to actually look for those permission requests. So we're gonna take a look at permission requests of user. We'll just run this and we will authenticate as user number one because we are the manager of user number two. So now when we run this, you can see we get the user of Chris because we are the authenticated user. And then we have a list of users that we manage. And for each of the users that we manage, we get a list of all of the APIs that they have requested access to. Once we have that, then we can proceed if the authenticated user chooses to allow those users to access those APIs. So now that we know that we want to allow user number two to access that API, we can use this edit permissions endpoint to actually allow that permission. So let's run this. We'll go ahead and authenticate as user number one because we are the manager of user number two. The API ID is 17900 and the user ID is two. Again, this is the user that's requesting access. So when we run this, 
We get a success. We'll go back to the database. We'll check our permissions and we can see that user number two is now allowed to access this endpoint. So let's go ahead and turn off all users on that one. And then we'll go back to our data one API and we will run this as user number two. And we get a success as expected because this user is now specifically allowed to call this API. That's pretty much the whole thing. Again, just to give you a quick rundown, and we do have a snippet in the description for you so you can install this and use it yourself. We just need this permissions and permission requests table, as well as the user table to contain a list of users that that user can manage and a flag to determine whether or not they are an administrator. For each of the APIs that you want to check permissions, we use this check permission function to do so. When you add the check permission function to a function stack, and I'll go ahead and create a new one and just show that to you. We'll just call this new. We would need to make sure that in each function stack, we want to check the permission that we enable authentication and that the first step in the function stack is our check permission function, which needs the API ID that comes from right here in the upper right hand corner. So for this one, it's 18180. And then the user ID, which is just going to be the ID of the authenticated user, just like that. So now this endpoint can also have its permission checked. Now this endpoint does also need to exist in the permissions table. And to do that, you can just run that permissions populate endpoint once again, if you need to update this. If a user needs to request permission, you can call the permission request endpoint to take in that data. And then we also have a permission requests of user endpoint, which will show you all of the currently pending user requests. And then finally, we have an endpoint called edit permissions, which will allow you as the administrator to edit user permissions as they are requested. I hope you found this helpful. Do let us know if you have any questions down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.